Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking this afternoon with Johnny. Hey. Hey, welcome. how's it going, Christian? We're Thank you for having me. Well. Yeah, hey, congratulations. So brand spanking new MVP. Right, just a couple of weeks in the book, so I'm, I'm uh, eager to learn more and, and keep going in the community. Now, did you send out the uh, the tweet that said that you're humbled and honored? Because that's kind of the, that's the specific word. Name. Now you can switch it back and forth, honored and humbled, humbled and honored either way. <laughs> yeah, I actually did send that tweet out. Um, I was actually sending the tweet out to congratulate the other MVPs as well. And then I put the and, I re- I'm honored to receive um, the, the MVP. Uh, you know, it's still kind of fresh and new to me. So uh, I've, I've been working for about four years to get this. So it's been, it's been a definitely humbling um, and honor, honored experience as well. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's one of those things that we were talking about before we started recording. It's 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 uh, you know, as I'm sure you've been, you said you've been working on it, and, and always provide this guidance. I, you know, once in a while, someone will reach out and be like, you know, hey, can you, you know, throw my name in the mix? And and some people that I don't know that well, I'm like, I, I wouldn't know what to say to be able to recommend. But I said, but typically, you know, the the people that become MVPs, they 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 do this kind of stuff. They're heavy community activity, blogging, speaking, creating, uh, uh, you know, just d- different kinds of assets um, for for the community, whether or not they have the MVP status. And I mean, you've been in and around the community for a long time. So say working on it for four years, but you've been in and around longer than that. What, what's right. kind of your what's kind of your path? What would be your recommendation to somebody that's interested in becoming an MVP? Like what was your path? So yeah, just I started out with my path is is speaking locally at the user group meetings and attending those frequently and hey, and just become yeah go ahead. I was just say maybe we should start with like do the the formal introduction of who you are then oh back, yeah sure back to that thought yeah yeah for sure so um, my name is Johnny Lopez I'm a uh, Microsoft 365 consultant uh, based down in Houston Texas. Uh, I've been I've, I'm a native Texan. Um, I served ten years in the Navy. Um, aboard a couple of aircraft carriers. Uh, so I got, I learned SharePoint in the Navy. So I, I have a SharePoint background back to SharePoint 2003. Um, I saw a book that was sitting on the table and I was like, what is this thing? And it was how to, you know, build your own SharePoint 2003 server. Uh, so that's how I kind of learned SharePoint uh, and working in, in, in as it as a user as well. Uh, very passionate about community family, uh, very involved in a lot of things. I coach, um, uh, basketball right now second grade girls basketball uh, I'm also a 6U coach for baseball as well so I coach wow. performance sports uh, and I call I coach softball with my daughter you know I have uh, boys and one girl so uh, I got to take care of her and make sure yeah, my, she's taken care of my da- daughter through high school played softball baseball with the boys for years was the only girl in like two or three age groups and uh, then played softball in high school and um, yeah, so it's a lot. Of, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not a fan of baseball as a sport. I just it bores me to tears. But seeing your kids playing, it's a completely different experience. And I'll tell you, I, I have more fun at the kids games than I've uh, you know had. Uh, you know, I don't really follow professional sports, although I, I am a lifelong A's fan. So born born in uh, in Oakland, raised in the Bay Area. So even though I'm not a, a baseball fan, I am a fan of the A's. That's so. awesome. Yeah. I'm an Astros fan. I'm a native of Houston. So yep. um, got to support the home team. Of course. But, yeah. I mean, uh, coach, if I'm not coaching, I'm watching or, or watching some type of sport. Um, I'm very, pretty much involved in, in most of the, the sports here. So that's very cool. Yeah. I did even think of like how, how um, sports at that age, how they've been Im- impacted, but you guys still out there doing things in the COVID era. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, it's social distancing as, as you know, as much as we can, you know, masks were for the, um, ma- the players don't have to wear them, but for families and attendees for the, for the games, they have to wear a mask and just, you know, be cautious, wash your hands, just, you know, the, the normal, yeah. um, you know, pandemic stuff, but we were in down in Texas, we're, we're pretty much, you know, um, still social distancing, but we're still playing as well. So yeah. all, all of our kids are in school. Uh, I think it's, um, you know, good that they're in school, but uh, they do have asynchronous learning once a month 
uh, where they sit at home and, and they do online learning. So yeah, it's a different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm like, well, all my kids are big, so they're, I don't have to think about that, but I've got the elementary school, like right behind my house. And so I <laughs> walk in the dog three, four times a day, you know, pass, see the kids out and stuff. I just I'm thinking about that. Well, it's great. Well, so back to kind of your path in. So doing some stuff in the space, you picked up that book. Who was the author of that book? Do you remember? Um, I, I don't remember. It was back. <laughs> it probably, it might've been you. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me. I didn't have no, a 2003 book, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember who the author was, but um, it, it was, uh, it was a pretty good book. And I, I actually built my own server and, and was able to do that um, on a machine, on an actual machine that was in our shop. Uh, so uh, it was, re we repurposed it as a server and it was uh, quite interesting and fun. Uh, I did a lot of work over the years from migrations to, uh, and you know, doing analysis on intranets and um, building forms and InfoPath and SharePoint Designer, you know. So uh, I got my good experience you, as a, you went as through a the Sharepoint. gauntlet. Yeah, I went through the gauntlet, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I picked up BPAWS too, whenever it was, uh, I'm, I'm always looking for new, exciting technologies around the yeah. Microsoft stack. So I picked up BPAWS and then started learning Office 365 and just became a champion. And, you know, and now, I, you know, I, I, the title architect comes with the, uh, with the, the experience and the, the passion too, as well. So it's been a, it's been a good journey. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the mentors that I had over the years that helped um, and that's why I try to get back to as well, becoming the mentor for, for folks that want to get started and just giving them free advice. And, and, you know, that's what the community is about, right? Helping yeah. them understand what they can and can't do and, and uh, all that good stuff. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny you go and you look at, I, I love, uh, so we've been doing uh, the office hours live streams uh, for the last, you know, uh, 45 weeks and uh, the, uh, What's been great about that is you see like a different questions, types of questions that are asked. And there's some that are obviously like the, uh, the consultants that are not doing the basic, like do your Google search yourself. Like you can find <laughs> this information, come on. And then you have you know, people that are you know, end users, maybe some power users, and they're asking you know, legitimate questions that are a little more complex. And it's a lot of fun to dig in and then ask those questions. Like, how are you using this? And they're running into these, these walls and you see you know, we see it enough that we start seeing those patterns and uh, and when you can help people get past those things. And especially when you just, you know, the answer, like, you know, this is what you need. Here's the script. PowerShell allows you to do this or, you know, no, it doesn't do this. I feel your pain. There's no solution for it that rarely we have that answer, but it's you know, unfortunate answer, but it's, but it's just a great feeling to, to give back in that way. I'm, you know, I, I love that aspect of the MVP program is, is uh, you know, wish, wish more people would, you know, give up more of their free time to help each other. I think we'd, we'd all be further along as a society if people would do that more. So. Absolutely. I agree with you. So what kind of stuff would you like, are you doing any other events like online events? Like what kind of stuff are you talking about presenting at? What are you passionate about right now? So this year I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about really, um, the new teams and I, and I call it the new teams because there's a lot of things coming out in teams and it's a lot um, of productivity uh, packaging and, and there's a lot of things that you can do deeper and now more comparable to other platforms. Uh, so I'm, 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 I've been, um, I have a YouTube channel called the rocket channel and I'll tell you a backstory about that maybe some other time. Um, but uh I'm doing a lot of teams things like, like my next uh, video is breakout rooms. I'm going to do, I'm going to break down breakout rooms as a organizer and as a participant. Um, and then, you know, very passionate about teams, uh, doing a lot of teams deployments uh, for a lot of customers. So deploying the team teams based on their needs and their, their culture and their, and what governance they need. I'm still doing SharePoint intranets. Uh, I have a passion about sh uh, SharePoint. I mean, I started from that, so I don't like to uh, shy too far away from that, but, so there's really a mixture of teams in SharePoint and then search as well. So there's a lot of things coming out with Microsoft search um, that can benefit organizations. So I'm going to start doing a lot more with search and uh, really around building connectors and, and connecting their internal data with Microsoft search and how powerful it can be. And so they can overcome challenges of spending a lot of time searching. Um, so that's uh, a couple well, things that I'm looking forward to. There's a but, you know, internally inside Microsoft. I mean, just like any big company, you have people that will go and move into different roles and kind of the, 
you know, grow their careers there. But you've got a bunch of people that uh, uh, were in the SharePoint space that have moved over into the AI and the search spaces. Uh, and so it's, uh, and there's people doing AI in the search space as well. But, you know, there's the, the various teams that are there. It's, but you're seeing the people that were long time uh, SharePoint people kind of move over into the, some of those other roles. It's only going to um, benefit um, overall the, the, the platform. Absolutely. So Cole, so are you, are you doing any events, anything that you're uh, actively participating in or helping organize? Uh, yeah, so I'm the president for the Houston Office 365 community. Uh, we meet once a month. Um, I'm also the co-host for the Houston Power Platform user group. Um, Reza Durrani and I, we kind of run that group as well. And we, we have an annual event. Uh, it used to be called SharePoint Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's morphing into, you know, M365 Saturday slash virtual Friday or something like that. So yep. uh, all of our events have been virtual, but I'm looking forward to getting back into face to face. I do, I speak about 12 to 15 events a year, uh, whether virtual or, you know, last couple of years in person. Um, but I'm, I'm doing some of those events. We, uh, I'm speaking at our local event this month and also the Cincinnati user group um, yep. as well this month at the end of the month. So uh, I'm hoping to do two a month. Uh, if not, I'll um, I'll get three or four and then add some more videos to that and uh, continue to push out content as needed. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I, you know, for years I did the, well, 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 back when I was working for one of the ISVs in the early two, you know, 2010s, I was uh, probably doing, you know, minimum three or four events a month. That was a lot to go and do. Is. <laughs> I, I'm doing the same thing where, you know, once or twice a month, trying to uh to present at some at some kind of event um and it's uh again it's uh, i'm i'm thinking i'm in a different role now and uh, so it's it's a little more on the biz dev side of things um yeah. and the benefit of that uh, so actually with my new job description there is zero content that's part of my job description which means that i'm still going to write blog i'm still going to do other stuff but it's stuff that I want to write about and talk about, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, but there are, there's, there's not a shortage of opportunities. If people want to like participate, like you want to find out more about like your user group. I mean, is there a process for that? Are you actively, do you, do you have your calendar built out for months or are there opportunities for people if they are interested in sharing some of the solutions that they've developed internally and wanting to kind of get their foot in the door and speaking at these events? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to hou365.org, we have uh, a speaker submission form that you that you can fill out and we can uh, we do have openings, but we do fill up a schedule in our user group for uh, at least a couple months out. Uh, sometimes we fill them up the whole year in, in a couple in a week or two, but uh, it, with the pandemic and everything going on, it's usually month to month sometimes. Um, but yeah, if you go to hru365.org, you can um, see all of our sessions that we have upcoming and also uh, look for more information. We post all the major conferences on the website. So if you're you're stumbling on our website, you, all the major Microsoft conferences are posted there. Um, so if you do want to speak, reach out to me on Twitter uh, or LinkedIn, uh, and I'll get you the information that you need. You know, one of the benefits of doing more online stuff is that you'd be like, you know, and we were doing this with uh, with Utah user group as well. So we we also uh, we, last year was our first year. We rebranded as we moved it to Friday and called it Microsoft 365 Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, we more than doubled our numbers by moving it to Friday. Right. Um, but it's a little different the 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 culture of the community here in in Utah, um, where uh, you know Sunday is not an open day to do stuff on the weekend, uh, and therefore everybody gets stuff done on Saturday. So people are less willing to give up their Saturday to go to a technology event. So we moved it to Friday. So we've kind of adjusted. But one of the other things we've tried to do is increase the volume of webinars and other speakers and topics. So we're very opportunistic. Somebody reaches right. out to us, you know, and we really like that. And it's just really timely. We're like, hey, let's, uh, you know, can we schedule something two, three weeks out? And we'll just put something in place in addition to our user group. Um, right. So we've been doing that more. But yeah, so people shouldn't be shy reaching out. Well, let me ask you, since you're the first MVP Buzz Chat interview of the new year of 2021, uh, let me ask you, what are your predictions for 
uh, this this year around uh, the technology. Anything, obviously, no NDA information here. <laughs> um, but what would what do you think is going to happen? What would you like to see happen around the platforms this year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know Microsoft has done a great job on putting together a consistency across uh, each of the products in the platform, um, you know, with with search and with other components uh, from a scalability perspective. I, I'd like to see more uh, uh, more of that, too, as well, continuing the, the progression and continuing uh, the momentum that they had in the, the previous uh, years um, with with uh, consistency. But um, th from a timing perspective, there's a lot of uh, uh, extra licenses uh, and some of these uh, features that come out. So I'd like to see a little bit better licensing uh, models come out this year from the Power Platform and also from the, the M365 suite, just to help organizations, you know, be able to adopt their services faster and more agile. Uh, and, that, and, and things that align to their business needs and, and they don't have to wait two years down the road to uh, adopt some of these features. So I'd like to see that. I think this year there's going to be a lot more emphasis on on uh, on search. Uh, I think there's going to be there. Microsoft has announced a couple things in the past, like Project Cortex and SharePoint Syntax, and, and there's going to be a lot more coming out this year. I'm really excited to see that. I did a lot of beta work on that too, as well with uh, another organization that I worked with. Did a lot of preview for the connectors, and I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, for some of that stuff to come out. But we do a lot of GCC work as well, so the government communities. And uh, like to, I'd like to see more of the uh, general uh, enterprise product uh, features come out in GCC a little faster. Uh, I think that's 2021 would be, would be a good time to, to align those stars. That way, uh, when we're giving these demos, we don't have to break and say, okay, well, GCC, you're not getting this feature until next year. Sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's, just a few yeah. things. Yeah, there's that. That's a, yeah, just, just a minor point that uh you know we we do hear from like i look i've not worked as much within that sector plenty of friends that uh work within fed as well as the state and local and have those kinds of issues you know want get excited about things but to be fair there's a lot of things where we all see it we get excited we see something talked about it microsoft ignite only to find out you know looking at the uh uh, the roadmap site that it's uh, they're saying, you know, H2 2021. You're like, what? Like, <laughs> I was so excited about that feature. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just wait a little bit longer for, uh, you know, any federal um, users getting access to that. So, there's a, yeah, there's another. One more, one more thing yeah. that I'm interested about, Dan, you know, Dan Holm is, is took a new role uh, yeah. for, for Yammer and, and, and groups uh, kind of, you know, putting the pe puzzle pieces together. So I, I, I'm interested in seeing that play out and, you know, Dan's a great guy, great, great visionary. I'm looking forward to see how that that's going to play out for future um, endeavors with, within those technologies. You know, for somebody, you, you can't get much more, you know, hardcore uh, SharePoint, than Dan Holm and for him to go over in, and he's had some marketing responsibilities, his team yeah. and that side of it, but to take over and move for those that haven't heard, he's moving from product marketing over to product management. So actually helping shape the development of, of Yammer and, and groups, like that's a big deal. So um, I don't know if, if Dan's ever been in a product role like that, honestly, I, I, I don't to, know. I have to look. I have to look at his LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know he's been on the deployment side, and so he's, you know, he still is the SharePoint guy, the in-house SharePoint guy for the Olympics every four years. He's not given that up. Yeah. Um, you know, and so he was able to maintain that even his move over to Microsoft. So, yeah, it'll be exciting to see what what happens. A few people shifting roles around, but numbers still blowing up, just in, in, in increasing there, but. Um, yeah, I, I've been a long-term, uh, lo long-time uh, advocate of, of Yammer. Um, I like the uh, inner and outer room uh, 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 or, or ring concept. Yeah. You know, Microsoft doesn't use it anymore, but uh, um, I'm a believer in that. But anyway, with that, all that, you know, if people want to get in touch with you, what, what are the best ways that people can reach you, find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at rocket underscore 15 two, with two T's, or you can search with me, uh, search for me on LinkedIn. 
Uh, I always respond usually in the same day. So if you guys want to uh, find me there, um, I do have an about me um, site. Uh, you can search on about me. There's some things on there. Uh, YouTube channel, but uh, I usually respond uh, to all the messages, um, even the spam. I respond to those too as well. So <laughs> you got time on your hands then to respond to that stuff. Well, I, I'll provide. No, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I'll provide all the links out to you and the user group stuff out on uh, on the on the Buckley Planet blog post as well. So if you find this uh, this recording on YouTube, so you can go over to Buckley Planet and uh, you'll be able to find this as well. You can search on Johnny's name and and uh, find the blog post. But Johnny, hey, really appreciate your time today and uh, let you get back into it. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch up soon. One of these days, I'll be down your way. Probably I'll see you down in Texas before we see each other at like a uh, MVP summit or something up in Washington State. <laughs> yeah, when you when you get down to Texas, tell Eddie and, and Fontroll I said hello. They, they know me yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Wow. Yeah.